It is great to be here tonight. Um, if I had a dollar for every time I followed the ass ponies, I would have a dollar. But, um, <laughs> but it's great. Um, I am the proud executive director of one site, um, and I just want to share a little bit about, about me. But I read this article in April, it was in Harvard Business Review, and it simply said, the happiest people pursue the most difficult problems. So, a couple questions. If we, A, do we believe that's true? B, if we do, how would it impact us in big decisions? And lastly, how would it impact in us in day-to-day -day decisions? So there's this statement that I believe. The happiest people are the ones tackling the most complex challenges. I believe that to be true. And there's actually a characteristic that we often call these people. We often call them an entrepreneur. And when we think of entrepreneur, we think of names and faces like this. Maybe. <laughs> if you guys want to go forward, great. Steve Jobs, right? Entrepreneur, we know that. The next face, Coco Chanel. The only fashion icon and one of the most, the top 100 most influential people in the 20th century. The next face, Jeff Bezos. Started a small little company we know as Amazon, right? But what happens, instead of entrepreneur, if we put one word in front of it, we put social. And I love this definition. I love this definition that was given to me. Social entrepreneurs identify resources where people only see problems where they view the villagers as the solution, not the passive beneficiary. They begin with the assumption of competence and unleash resources in the communities they're serving. I love beginning with the assumption of competence. I love that. I was not a social entrepreneur about five years ago. I never considered myself one, until recently. I'm an optometrist from Cincinnati. I'm a Cincinnati kid. I had a private practice, was very blessed, up in Mason. And I started to think about what would it be to use my skills to impact people outside of Cincinnati. And we all need to be careful what we wish for, right? We've got to be careful, because I was given an opportunity to move to Mamelodi, South Africa. I sold my house, I sold my practice, I sold my cars, I let my good friends borrow my dog, because <laughs> I wanted her back. And my wife and I moved to Mamelodi, South Africa. When we think of South Africa, we, think, we tend to think of, you know, big animals, big cats, right? But when I think of South Africa, I think of this picture. This is a picture of Mamelodi. It is a post-apartheid township about 20 miles outside of Pretoria, about an hour from Johannesburg. A couple key stats about Mamelodi. 40% of people in Mamelodi have HIV. 35% of them have tuberculosis. And the most amazing stat to me is that in 1990, the average life expectancy was 70 years of age. In 2010, it was 47. They lost 23 years of life in 20 years. And we don't, we don't ever want to know what they need. We don't want to assume we know what they need, right? We want to ask them. We want them to tell us, what do you need? So we did a community health survey. The number one thing they asked for? Vision care, which is fortuitous to me, being an optometrist, right? <laughs> number two, dental care. And I always like to show this picture because I say the number two. And this is kind of when I woke up, because shortly after being there, we went to a, a rural part of Africa, and we handed out a toothpaste and a toothbrush. What did the kids do? <laughs> Ate the toothpaste. That's why we see toothpaste. Why? They thought it was candy, which, when Americans go to Africa, they usually bring candy. Right? And that's when it hit me. The problem is way bigger than that. And I still didn't know why vision care was, one, was number one until I saw this. 
So you'll have to forgive me on the production quality of this. This is me filming this as I'm driving up in my car. And it's important to know, at this point, I didn't work for one site. I actually had barely even known what one site was. This is the line to get into the one site vision clinic on the third day of a clinic for a two week clinic. This is the third day. Another important thing you need to know is this is at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. These people value, these beautiful people value so much an eye exam and a pair of glasses, they're willing to wait in a line this long for just that. I had no idea about the World Vision Care Crisis. I had no idea that one site had been operating for 25 years. I had no idea that they had helped 8.5 million people. I had no idea about these things when I saw this line. I don't remember the last time I waited in a line this long for anything. Never mind a pair of glasses. Maybe to get tickets for the Joshua Tree Tour. You too. Maybe. That was pretty long for an eye exam and a pair of glasses. And listen to the voice. There's someone in the car with me. Listen, listen to what she says. Oh my gosh. She says, oh my gosh. This is one of the foremost trauma surgeons in the United States who's there on the clinic with us just helping out. And I like to say she is discovering the World Vision Care crisis right now as we turn that corner. Oh my gosh, I had no idea it was this big. And you know what? As an optometrist from the US, neither did I. I had no idea. Hey. Oh my goodness. And she says, oh my goodness. Because we turn the corner and the line just keeps going. We come up and you'll see the line kind of pan out. You'll see the end of the video, right? For an eye exam and a pair of glasses. And you'll hear me talk very quickly to a gentleman there and just listen really closely what he says. Can you stop? Hmm? Hey guys. What time? Get out. You're not telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Come on. Two a.m. Yeah. in the morning. All right, we'll, we'll get you in, okay? Stop. Uh. Unbelievable. I might have said one other word too. <laughs> Unbelievable. The guy got there at 2 a.m. And that was the back of the line. So it got us asking this question. Why can't the world see? We hear of all these other massive social issues, but had we heard of this? So let's give it some context. We know there's about a billion and a half people around the world living in poverty. We know there's about 900 people who don't have access to clean drinking water. There's another 900 million people who are going hungry. But did we know that there's nearly three quarters of a billion people who can't see? But here's the good news. Did we know that with a simple pair of glasses, we can change the lives of people, over half a billion people, with a pair of glasses? Imagine those of you in the room that have glasses on right now, and you went without for the next week. How would that impact your ability to work to support your families? How would that impact your ability to learn in school? How would that simply impact your ability to see the faces of, of, you, of those you love, right? That is why one side exists. 
to eradicate the global vision care crisis. Big, complex, challenging problem, right? Two ways we're doing it. How are we doing that? First, we go to a place like the Gambia. The, Gambia's in, the Gambia is in West Africa. 1.8 million people in the Gambia. You know how many optometrists there are? One. For 1.8 million people. So we're going there trying to create a system solution where we teach and train Gambians, transfer our skills, so Gambians are caring for Gambians. That we're creating awareness for vision care, we're driving them to the vision center that we put in, into the regional hospital, because that's where people are used to going for care. And it's working. It's working. And we have plans to do three more in 2014, four more in 15, and in three years, we will have brought access to sight for the entire country of the Gambia. In three years. But here's the thing. You do not have to go halfway around the world to change it. In our own backyard, you might have heard of the One Site Vision Center at Euler School. If you haven't been to Euler, get down there, check it out. It's an amazing place. Here's some key facts to always start with the why, the need. One in four kids in North America have an undiagnosed vision problem. And yet 80% of what we learn is visual. 80%. So there's a gap. Huge gap. So we created a vision center as beautiful as any vision center as you'll ever see in Euler School. So we can provide permanent, sustainable access to every kid in Cincinnati Public Schools. And I'm really proud to say that we are on track in 18 months to be financially self-sustaining. And it's, it's getting so recognized that New York City Public Schools is saying, hey, we want this. And we'll tell you how bad we are. 80% of kids are on Medicaid in New York City Public Schools, and 1 in 20 are homeless. New York City. So that next year, we're in 2014, this is going to New York, and LA, and a couple more places. I said one site through an amazing history of 25 years has helped over 8.5 million people. And it's really important to realize every person we help has a story, right? Everyone has a story. And we can't share 8.5 million stories, but I can share a story that just recently happened in, in, Nicar in Nicaragua on a clinic that we put on with a great partner and it was about a mom who had recognized that her child couldn't see when he was two. Two. She was aware enough to, to tell. He couldn't see. It took her six years to find an option. And it took one sight going to Nicaragua. Let's just see this quick story. What will he do now that he has glasses? Ahora qué va a hacer? Que tiene un nuevo par de lentes. ¿Qué piensa hacer ahora? Que tiene un nuevo par de lentes. Estudiar mucho y ser feliz con él. He's going to study a lot and go to school and be happy and make mama happy. What does he want to be? ¿Qué quiere ser cuando sea grande? Ostermolo. Oh, he wants to be an optometrist. And it's important to remember, I'm just a kid from Cincinnati who wanted to be an optometrist. And now I get to do this. And at one site, we will not stop 
until the world can see. We will not stop, except we'll stop that. <laughs> we will not, just so that you can hear me clearly, we will not stop until the world can see. And please take this as an invitation that I really hope the we includes all of you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.